91 Donkey Lane is a magical apartment complex that contains immense power but lacks intelligent inhabitants. What is happening? I'm getting texts. Why are we getting a lot of texts? People found out what we did. Oh, dividing Mike Myers into an infinite amount of tiny Mike Myers. Listen to 91 Donkey Lane for free on Spotify or your favorite podcasting app. More at 91donkeylane.com. See you there, you donkeys. It is mind-blowing. And heartbreaking. How many original scripts are written every year but are never made? So we seek out these scripts and bring them to life with full audio production and professional actors. Check us out at Undiscover Scripts. Movies made of paper. Wherever you get your podcasts. Free! Everybody and welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night. I don't know which one of you picked this one. I'm going to guess Scott. I picked Final Destination. Hell okay, yeah, buddy. Final Destination. We're talking Final Destination released in 99 or 2000. I 2000. genuinely never remember. It's 2000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Devin Sawa is much sweatier in this one than anyone in next week's. That is yes. true. That no is kidding. True. He turns um, in space, he turns no full Michael sweat. Shannon in Bug. Like, uh, he's, or I guess Michael Shannon in Bug turns full Devin, Devin Sawa, Sawa in Final, Final Destination. Destination. Yeah. Michael Shannon in literally everything I've seen him in is, like, very sweaty. He's got sweaty just a nice glisten, nice sheen. But he ain't no sheen, dude. Ooh. So it's been... Let me ask this question. Well, there's two questions I have here. First question is to Kyle. Kyle, was this your first watch of Final it Destination? It was my first watch. It was my first watch <laughs> of Final Destination, there's of any child. Final Destination movie. But I mean, it's it, in all I, for all I should have seen it. I should have seen it in my life, like but before now, and it just was Th- one this, of those. This things. one actually and, blows my mind. I mean, like yeah, of dude. all the things that you haven't watched before us, right? Um, right. This is no, the this last is... thing I would have guessed. Well, wait, Kyle. Yeah. Let's for the just to temperature check. Two thousand when this came out. How old were you? Two. I was nine. Yeah. Oh, see. Okay. okay. That, <laughs> yeah. That, I feel like that explains a bit. <laughs> so Scott, I actually think the last time I watched Final Destination, I was with you hanging out on your couch for one of Did our we live do streams. This one for a live that stream. That was when Brian could not when... stay awake. <laughs> oh, really? Final Destination was in that? I can't even yeah. remember the the lineup. All I know is that he was asleep by the time that we ended the night with Nightmare on Elm Street. Jumping right into the promo segment real quick. Patreon.com backslash HMN podcast. Uh, come sell, show your support. Uh, Did the flight attendant come to your house, uh, Scott? Or didn't give you some I goods? I am the flight attendant. And you know what I made? I made an aviation. <laughs> because I nice. am a fancy boy. Um, if yeah. I'm going to France, it was either a French 75 or mm. an aviation. And I haven't had an aviation in five years and i really only like them because they taste like a flower so for Mm. matt and literally anybody else that um has not heard of an aviation it's a cocktail it's a gin cocktail with it's dry gin um lemon juice luxardo which is maraschino liqueur doesn't taste like cherries it tastes kind of like dry it just tastes Mm. like it's kind of like vermouth without the top note. It's it's a really it's a, it's less of a flavor and more of yeah. like a, a a a sensation. And then creme de violette, which is what gives it that oh. that purple hue. And um, I also thought that this would be a good pick for next week. I'm not. I have something else for next <laughs> week. But the purple mm-hmm. color, yes, it's all is there. Very yeah. very important to next week's pick. So it's very um, yes, that is anyway, true. But I, I also I went super fancy and it, for the Patreon. The third thing that you oh. can see is. I actually did the lime twist in it. Um, Dude, it, is, it is the fanciest drink. You're I, I have a streak show. of cocktails right now, uh, yeah. I think. This I'm is trying to expand. I couldn't find any f- 
burning planes on the 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 outside of a can. Who knew? <laughs> who, yeah, knew? Who, who, who knew? Who knew? Well, that's okay. I got you covered because I got a burning <laughs> plane on this side of a can. Purgatory, which just has a cat named Death on the front here. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so if we're talking about Death as our main villain, uh, I'm going to Purgatory for that one, which is a, right. it's it's a coffee stout. So. A Cat Named Death is my favorite segment in the uh, Tales of the Dark Side movie. <laughs> uh, so, uh, all right. So now that we've spent six minutes talking, <laughs> talking about, about why well, you should be on Patreon and drinks, let's yeah. dive into Final Destination, which one thing that, that jumped into my brain pretty much immediately is that, you know, there are certain things that you've forgotten about that you experienced in your childhood that like things have changed for so long and for me that was the actual flippy terminal board in the airport because i'm yeah, so used to now like a digital cool one anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't get those loud ass clicky clicks whenever no. and the just flights a, were changing just a, a pre 9 11 airport is still is kind of a shocker to me like yeah, oh, seeing, people just come in and go in however seeing, they please. Seeing airport, like so between this and nine eleven, I mean, I you never want to fly again. So the <laughs> no. fact that, but this, and so they're this, what a year apart from each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. Like, so to see the pre nine eleven airport with a tra with a supernatural tragedy, well, and then think about fucking anything. Listen, yeah, it's it's easy to be afraid in the two thousands, but thankfully Bowen's planes are so safe now in two thousand twenty four. I almost screamed when I saw that they were getting onto a Boeing. Yeah. I was like, uh, perfect. Don't of course, do. Devin Sawa, actually... I have the same powers of precognition as you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, one of the things that I think is so dumb in this movie, and it kicks in at the very start of the movie and continues till the better end. Why is death using John Denver as his one way to hint to every? Could you not just use songs from various musicians that died in plane crashes? Like they only John Denver have enough is money so, to. John Denver is so not scary. Like, it's supposed to be ominous. Buddy Holly man. is a fucking freak, though. So if you hear a Buddy mean. Holly song, you better watch out. Yeah, you, you know, like if she's cooking and like that'll be the day is playing and like while they're Ooh. sitting in the restaurant and you hear like Freebird playing like there's just like Freebird, maybe come not free, on. Freebird okay, may have been expensive. All right, Tuesday's you gone. Stop thinking about better ideas because I already thought about and maybe this is a Patreon, but I already thought about what a, not the new Final Destination, but what an <laughs> even more interesting take on Final Destination will be. And we'll have this the, the music budget of gods. So, okay. uh, yeah. Right, we'll just, so stay tuned. That'll be yeah. the, the Patreon, your Patreon to tie into this episode. Man, we if are selling the Patreon like crazy. <laughs> Write it down, Kyle. We're, we're recording a bunch of these at Creature Feature. <laughs> um, Perfect. One of the most interesting casting decisions in this movie is fresh off of American Pie booking Stifler as the push around geek in this movie. Carter, you dick. I yeah, I like, say that. Matt, you haven't asked me why I picked this movie. And yeah, I think okay, I just yeah, answered let's start with why. that. Why why did you pick yeah, why'd you pick this movie? Carter you dick is part of my vernacular. Also, <laughs> um did, Matt, did you ever watch the DVD of this? Not like a blue, but like the DVD of it. So I have the DVD. Um I I think I know what you're getting to, and I only did that with part three. Does the Final Destination DVD also have a choose your own adventure feature? No, no. The Final Destination, what? the original Final Destination DVD that came out, I that had to have been 2001 because I was, it was, I was in high school. Either I was in high school, I was, or I was home for summer vacation 20, 2002. But like, it was the DVD of it. It was there was a special feature that would tell you how you were going to die. Oh um, God! <laughs> you put in your birth date, and they would it would tell you how you're going to die. Um, I don't remember what it told me, but I just found that to be so fucked up and funny that they so, that they were like, "This is going to get people to buy the DVD." <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing: the the menu screen on the DVD. And this was the first time I noticed this. The menu screen of the DVD feels like it's for a completely different movie. Like, I get 
why it is what it is, but the menu screen is inside of a plane cockpit with the options being buttons inside the plane and through the window is just Devin Sawa screaming over and over again. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I don't know who laid this one out, but this was not the most well thought out <laughs> layout Dude, on a DVD menu. I have, there's such a, nost- I have, I'm talking about this, I have such a nostalgia for the DVD menu. I, didn't, I haven't seen the Final Destination yeah. one, but I'm just like, okay, all right. Another idea, a TikTok of just DVD menus. Love it. Boom. Love it. All Boom. Right. That's the whole now TikTok out, pages Matt. account. Okay. I'll <laughs> Don't ma- let anybody so else know about because it. Because I mentioned it, I should mention it again because this is insane to me that the Final Destination 3 DVD had a choose your own adventure version of watching the movie where every time that the characters came up to a decision in the movie, it would say like, Mm. do you get on the roller coaster? Do you stay off the roller coaster? And if you select it, like get on the roller coaster, it would play the death of everybody in full. And then the credits would just start to roll. (laughs) Like that was- Could you imagine being, I mean, I understand if you're signing up for a Final Destination 3, then you might have an idea that shit is just maybe not going your way. But could you imagine being a filmmaker and having them just be like, well, this is how anybody can watch the movie not yeah. how you wanted it, it to be at all but it also seemed here's the flip side the director may have had something to say for hey, it because this is true they also filmed additional scenes that aren't in the movie if mm. you choose other options <laughs> like, yeah oh so they wrote the script like devin sawa was trying to do yeah. the line graph <laughs> in the in the airplane they're exactly. like exactly and then this happens. i can't remember i've i've basically seen this one a bunch of times I've seen the second one maybe twice. I've seen the third one a couple times because it's actually pretty good. And then every following sequel. What's the biggest kill in the third one? Is that the one where somebody gets like destroyed by equipment at a weight? Okay, I've seen seen three once. once. I think I've seen this movie like four times, five times at this point. I've seen two Mm. at least three times because of the log death, which is arguably the best Final Destination death. And it's It's, a travesty that it's not in the mm. first movie. It's the best Final Destination setup because it is the one that still to this day, I think, affects every human being. When you yes. see yeah. any type of truck, you're just yes. like, okay, go. Always. Like, uh, and, and even like the roller coaster one, I still, I am not a fan of like very specific types of roller coasters. I will ride most yeah. of them, but like the dangly feet ones, there's always a part of me that's just like, as mm. I'm boarding, like, all right, this might be the it. This might be it. This is this is the last that anyone and will I'm, ever see Matt I've Kelly never alive, been and will never be on a roller coaster because I'm not a moron. I also yeah. was incredibly traumatized by um, Beyond the Final Destination movies, uh, House on Haunted Hill '99. Um, yeah, when they go off the rails, I was like, "Yep, that's exactly what happened." If the, the, and the first and only time I ever got on one, a coaster that apparently does that that jumps a gap in the it. rail. I fucking hate it. I'm like. That's, and I'm like, that has no, to be fake. It. And then yeah. I kept Googling and I'm like, I guess it's not. But man, is that just setting up to be a tragedy? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. No, no, so, not worth it. Don't like that. So the, I wind, think- the wind blows a little too hard one direction and you're done. Yeah. That's it. Um, so one of the things that I was thinking about when I was watching this movie is I think what this movie does well, especially in the first like 20 minutes, I think a good teen horror movie has this feeling where if none of the horror happened you were still like setting yourself up for just like a good teen flick rom-com like (laughs) like when they're in the airport and they're getting ready to go to paris like there's a part of me that's like i would also just watch the wacky (laughs) rom-com of these kids in paris like your euro trip is very good (laughs) (laughs) this one has to have some of the most unsettling imagery in any of it. Mm -hmm. Like watching that entire plane sequence is still like really uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, Yeah. this movie is so dread inducing. Yeah, 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 it is, it is. And I think that like the fun of it that I had was that it is it is dread inducing. I was feeling all of those things and I was also, but it made me want to watch and find all those little fun details. There's like, there's like tears of details. like. Mm -hmm, There feels like there's the baseline, like, references that everybody can get, you know, upon each kill. Like, but then there's, like, they just get, the details get smaller and quicker. And it's, it's, it really keeps your attention. Like, 
I was really, I was pleasantly surprised. And I was also pleasantly surprised that I didn't know a lot about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you probably knew I the said, plane, but there's not that much. People don't really talk about the other kills I, in this movie. I like, couldn't tell you what movie the plane was in, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't uh, know true, that yeah. the log was in two. You know, I've seen yeah. you know whatever supercuts or clips or, right, yeah. or references, and but you know, there's there's five plus the remake at this point. You know, who knows? Like, I had no clue. Um, so I, it was fun to like actually pay attention to it and and find those details. There's there's a factoid that's out there that I think people like kind of twist a little bit too much. But obviously this was it's a pretty well known fact that this was originally a X-Files spec script. Yeah. Now, what that means is that literally they had written a spec script of like, wouldn't it be crazy if somebody knew that there was going to be a plane crash, got off the plane crash and then became confident that death was coming to claim them and like Motor and Scully are on the case for this person like I the way I always imagine it was that the X-Files episode would literally be them talking to Devin Sawa after all of this you know what I mean like yeah. that's like the X-Files episode oh sure I feel like a yeah. lot of people act like this was just an X-Files script and they just like took Motor and Scully out of it and turned it into a horror movie and it's no, like no this, no. this doesn't no. flow like any X-Files <laughs> like well, episode I, I ever. read about it's, it and, and it, yeah. the the writer had the idea and was going to he was going to spec it for x-files and then colleagues were like no no make a full length of this and then the weirder part is that they got some writers from the x-files to do a treatment on it so yeah. it's it, it but it does not feel x-files to me until no. i read that it was originally considered by the writer to be like oh i could write an x-file also you gotta keep in mind that like this movie was probably conceived in that writer's head in like 97 96 97 right peak x-files timeline that would be like somebody i'm trying to think of an an analog for now that somebody was like oh this could be a so-and-so episode of tv or you know of of a a limited series and then it's like oh it could be its own thing (laughs) I think almost at this point, though, the reverse is probably that someone pitches a movie idea and they say, and could it just be like a mini a... series or could it yeah. be an episode yeah. of, yeah. 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 of this? It's like, a very true. special time. In, yeah. In <laughs> when the X-Files history. had an um, absolute chokehold on America. Yeah. You but know, I think dude. it's, I mean, similar is the story that like, television. you know, like the Frighteners was originally supposed to be the third Tales from the Crypt movie. Right. Yeah. And Robert Zemeckis looked at it and was just like, we can't we can't put the Crypt Keeper crack and wise at the front and back of this movie. Yeah. Like it's too mm-hmm. strong of a movie. Just release it as is because yeah. like when you think about it in the same terms of Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight, like that yeah. movie does not fit in at all no, in, no. in that scope. Let's talk about the cast, honestly, because there's I think I forget how many people who maybe aren't like super famous now, but certainly were 1999 2000 famous oh yeah that are in this movie <laughs> well we have obviously we have Devin Sawa and Ali, Ali Larder yep. huge huge teen stars this was not originally written to be teenagers it was supposed to be adults and then because of how popular Scream was producers were like make them high schoolers and then they they added the I, trip to, to Paris I think that's a better idea to oh, begin I agree. with yeah because I, just from the <laughs> logistics of it I feel like Devin Sawa's character, Alex, would have way more of a reason to try to stop the deaths of people that he sees in his day to day and that like are part of his social circle than if it was just like a gang of strangers that got kicked off the plane. And for whatever right. reason, he's yeah. just like following up with all of them like it wouldn't yeah. as, a, as an adult, work. I wouldn't I wouldn't try to risk my neck for anybody. <laughs> No. <laughs> another it's another one of those moments where you think that like you are bigger than anything else that's happening in the world, right? Like yes. it's that perfect yeah. age that you're like, "Oh, I'll take on death because it's the most important thing that could that could be part of my life." And I think if yeah, if it was 30-year-old people, you might be like, "Ah, I'm just going to let it happen." <laughs> Can you imagine it follows with 30-year-olds? <laughs> Yeah, oh. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, no, it, like, but exactly that would that would be that would be awesome. Them trying to get laid, but like they can't. 
<laughs> the deaths, they just like that that it follows demon just goes straight down the line like day after day. Like they, huge but then success he has to, like, story for slow that down demon. and sit and take a break because just if he doesn't <laughs> smokes a cigarette. Yeah, like it, it, no one's going to get laid. So, if we're talking about people though who their star was shining the brightest mm-hmm. in Chris 2000 Smith. and then quickly was snuffed out <laughs> uh, by by the sands of time. I got to give a shout out to one of the, one of the actresses that I used to always have a crush on at that time period, Amanda Dittmer, who showed up in literally this. It was Drop Dead Gorgeous, then this, then Boys and Girls, then Saving Silverman, and then basically Nothing. just vanished. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> I had to she look did, her, I had her to Google time. what else she'd been in because I remembered her face a little bit. But I yeah. was like, I, I don't, because I haven't watched Jawbreaker since I was probably Listen, 17. when you do two Jason Biggs movies back to back, you're really hurting <laughs> your chances for, <laughs> for the future. Mm. Um, but also, the person that I felt so embarrassed when I recognized them, and I was like... I know this guy. Why do I know this guy? Um, the actor who plays Todd, his friend. Yeah, who gets strangled in the bathtub. Which is the Which specific, I love that kill. I wrote down the circumstances for this hanging are so very specific. So many well, things had to specifically be set up in that kitchen. But I loved that because it made it seem like death was like, oh, I really need to like up my game. Like if the if the if the water's not gonna work and it's gonna you like have to try if, something else, you know, I have to do something crazy. <laughs> I was like, that's <laughs> awesome. So I won't say the biggest movie that he was in uh, outside of out of this but that actor I was like I recognize him why do I recognize him he was the star of a hundred women the sequel to a hundred girls which I have (laughs) still never seen and have very low expectations that I will be seeing it not a high priority for sure (laughs) Um, but yeah I mean this film still kind of kicks ass but I also when I was watching it it definitely hits this point where we get what I think is my favorite of all the kills towards the end, which is the decapitation by the random piece of yeah. metal yeah, that on is the, the train tracks. Kill. Not the most but, disturbing. I think that Miss Luden yes. is very depressing because she gets yeah. like, so she like is going to drink some liquor or some like vodka or whatever from a cup and then she throws it and then it makes her like cathode ray computer explode she gets a piece of fucking glass and she pulls it out so she starts to exsanguinate and then her her house um starts to catch on fire and she's like fuck i'm gonna burn to death before i bleed out and then she gets a bunch of knives in her chest and Mm. then she gets a knife pulled out and then she gets exploded so i mean it's it really is the most horrific in my mind but it is not the the one i'm like oh it's also probably the least fun one (laughs) like this movie movie isn't fun though that's the thing no i i want to give everybody oh like every listener here the first Final Destination may have been kind of subsumed due to the fact that it, by like, you know, pop culture, because mm-hmm. it's a bit less over the top with the kills, first of all. And second of all, it's not fun. It is just dread inducing. No. It gives me yeah. such death anxiety to watch this shit. The only yeah. thing that I find fun and funny about this is what Kyle said, like death is going to like breadcrumb Devin Sawa and be like, Hey, I'm going to kill your pal. Hey, yeah. Todd, like right on your thigh, this yeah. piece of paper yeah, yeah. that says, Todd, um, I'm going to kill your friend. I'm going to make it really bad for you because I'm coming for you. Like he's got a vendetta. But like, aside from that, this movie is so dark. It's just a yeah. dark ass movie. Well, well it's that sort of that it, idea that like people say like God has a sense of humor, right? And it's like so they're taking that and they're being like death is a slasher. So it's like death has this sense yeah. of humor mm-hmm. that like yeah, but yeah, they're still gonna Freddy. fuck you yeah. up, dude. Like <laughs> I, but I like, feel like he's I, more of a, a Michael Myers because he does not crack wise. That is yeah. true. But I I think my problem is that after we get that decapitation kill. Then it's basically just like an action movie almost for like yeah, 10 d- yeah, minutes. for sure. Mm-hmm. Like well, it's just like chase to, like, scenes yes, and exactly. like it's, and it just kind of like, I actually lose a lot of steam towards the end of it. And like, mm. I stopped paying and I, serious attention when no, Ali Larder stuck in a car. <laughs> no. And, but, but I think what you're right. There's a reason why I haven't watched this for almost five years, but I watch scream like twice a year. 
You know what I mean? Like Scream has what? so much more fun to it. Like Scream is like it feels it it gets that balance even better, right? Like right, yeah. because because if if no one died in Scream, I would still watch a movie about that group of friends yeah. hanging out cracking wise. Like yeah, yeah, right. and so it's like it's it's got that like and it's not just because it was like the first horror movie. Like I'm sure that's an element of it where there is this like very big like warm blanket with that specific sure. movie because of all that. But even yeah. if you remove that, it's just like Scream is so much more rewatchable because it's looser, because it like is funny and it's mm -hmm. snarky and it's sarcastic. So it's interesting that they tried to they tried to capture that with doing the teens in it, but like there's really no jokes. And I I know no. there's people who love that, but I talk about how I think jokes are a huge element of making horror work because mm -hmm. to me yeah. if the jokes are there to lull me into like a safe space then the scare hits harder if you're just hit me with scare after scare after scare it loses meaning the further it goes like that's yeah. where again i'm gonna talk about two movies that i really don't like and didn't expect to like but like part of why i really didn't like them is like movies like human centipede and tusk where mm. You know they reveal the monster at the halfway point they reveal like what they were creating in the halfway oh, point okay. and it's like yeah. the terror of that movie is building to that thing mm -hmm. sure and like the idea that both of those movies were like no i'm gonna show you it and then we're just gonna see what life is like <laughs> as a walrus <laughs> like like it's like that's not that's not what anybody signed up for that movie for and like no. Now I have an hour of looking at Justin Long in this very kind of <laughs> shitty looking walrus costume and like whatever like dread and terror that was in me leading up to that moment is just like draining out of me the longer that we're there because I'm like having way too much time to look at this thing. All of this is basically just a long winded way to get to the point that like, yeah, I, I, I think what people come to the Final Destination movies for is different than what I go to horror movies for. Because when mm. I think of even the second and third movie, like they are movies that I only watch maybe once every 10 years or something yeah. when I go like, oh man, I haven't seen that in a while. And I think it's because like, especially in part two, well, let's, I'm going to say this. In part two, which is part two and three are the only ones I think we could ever maybe do an episode on. But in part two, Allie Lauder is still alive. Yes. And she is like an unhinged hermit living in fear and like has nothing around her at all times. Just die at that point. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, like, what are you living for? Like, like, at what point when you're like sitting alone in a cabin with nothing to do for the rest of your life because you're afraid that any movement or thing that you do will get, cause death to kill you, then like, what are you actually staying alive Exposition. for anymore? That's what yeah. she's staying alive for. <laughs> <laughs> because we need her. Yes. I do have one thing about Allie Larder in this movie that I never realized until this watch. She's a manic pixie dream girl. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. so weird. Like yeah. I never gathered and I am going to be really vulnerable here. Manic Pixie Dream Girls in the early 2000s were like kryptonite for me. Like yes. I fell in love with every single one of them in every single movie until 500 Days of Summer, which is great because the whole point of that is fuck your Manic Pixie Dream Girl. She doesn't exist. That and Eternal Sunshine. I mean, like, yeah. those oh, are both right. supposed yeah. to be basically taking the idea of a Manic Pixie Dream Girl and being like, this isn't real. This is the reality. It's well, it's kind of like the female version of the Magic Negro in, like, a lot of, like, mm -hmm. sci-fi films. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's just like, here's this person who's just going to wander into your life and they are so unique and exquisite and have some type of element of magic, but you can't put your finger on it, but they're going to fix your entire life in the course of a weekend. And that's coming from a man who loves loves Garden State like <laughs> yeah. it's one no, of his I know, favorite movies. I know you love Garden State. <laughs> Being married to someone who really did uh, seem like a manic pixie dream girl in, in the early 2000s when I met her, um, it's ADHD. That's yeah, what you're yeah. looking for. You're not looking for a manic pixie dream girl. Um, 
it, it's it's adult <laughs> diagnosed ADHD in ADHD. women. It's just so funny to like look back on my choices and be like, yeah. holy shit. That's exactly what I was looking for was an ADHD yeah. girl, her in particular. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, warms, so it warms my heart, really. It's, it's, it's very magical. Beautiful. It's such a beautiful realization, but also I'm so glad it worked. <laughs> you know, like. 91 Donkey Lane is a magical apartment complex that contains immense power, but lacks intelligent inhabitants. What is happening? I'm getting texts. Why are we getting a lot of texts? People found out what we did. Oh, dividing Mike Myers into an infinite amount of tiny Mike Myers. Listen to 91 Donkey Lane for free on Spotify or your favorite podcasting app. More at 91donkeylane.com. See you there, you donkeys. It is mind-blowing and heartbreaking how many original scripts are written every year but are never made. So we seek out these scripts and bring them to life with full audio production and professional actors. Check us out at Undiscover Scripts. Movies made of paper. Wherever you get your podcasts. Free! Are you a fan of young adult novels? Have you ever wondered the stories behind the people who wrote your favorite young adult novels? Then join author Eric J. Brown and Alyssa Lube of Netflix's The Circle every other Tuesday on YAOK. Available on all podcasting apps. Woo! So I've got one more thing that I need to call out and then we'll start to wrap this discussion up. There is one moment in this movie that is so iconically dumb and they just kept doing it time and time again that it almost feels like parody but this is the one that got there first and that is tony todd as just the wise old mortician (laughs) (laughs) just that's just there to show up and explain the whole movie to the the main cast and then disappear and somehow they got him to come back like four more times to do it listen they're like hey tony todd do you want 10 grand for two hours of work? <laughs> like, yeah. he's like, fuck yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so that's the that. other thing I want to say. Like, I, I, Jeffrey Riddick, the, the writer, and, and Craig Perry, the producer, they're all, like, super, super students of the genre, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like they, like, as soon as Tony Todd came up, I was like, that feels like something that, like, they just fought for. They were like, well, I mean, I mean, it's Wong, I mean, it's Wong too, th- yeah. who directed it. So, like, we're, I mean, so we're talking about full students of the craft who are now available to like and able to make this huge it's like studio thing and uh this movie feels so big I, too by the way it, it feels big expansive. it feels huge i mean think about like even it's that last pieces. that hey, final scene so will next week's <laughs> it will feel big <laughs> that final scene with then that final like right before credits like i mean we're on like what's what like studio lot are we on you know what i mean like not actually, i saw this but in just theaters. like it's I had felt forgotten. huge i actually saw this in theaters and that really? ending scene felt massive mm. yeah because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you I believe you weren't it. expecting like it. you were expecting something but yeah. you weren't expecting that yeah yeah i wasn't dude it got me again you know like yeah. i was like shit um very cool it was it was fun to, it was fun to watch this with not a lot of knowledge uh in 2024 yeah yeah also i want to say one thing and then i know we'll go to we'll go on to the rest of our segments but um i lied when i said that there's only it's only funny that death bread crumbs devon sawa because devon sawa is hilarious he has one line that makes me laugh out loud every single time he goes he call he he refers to death as you fuck, and it's yeah. the way that he says it that is just like, <laughs> if I was being chased by the kind of like amorphous vague concept of death who's trying to get back at me for getting away, I would totally try to say that same kind of slick shit in a in Absolutely. a cabin, you know, where no one else could hear me except for the audience. You fuck. All right, all right. I think. I can't believe that we went almost 40 minutes. <laughs> so I think you're correct. You fuck that picked this. <laughs> Tell us what your double feature is for this. I'm not one. going obvious. I'm going with death spa because the, the kills feel <laughs> similar. <laughs> um, all right, Kyle, all right. how about you go next? I'm, I'm, we, I'm going with the Halloween remake, not Rob Zombie's Halloween, 
but the other Halloween oh, where, 2018 where, yeah 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 yeah. David Gordon Green mm-hmm. um I, I it feels right I don't know exactly what besides this sort of like supernatural death that's after it like in Jamie Lee Curtis building you know the the character building this death thing uh Laurie Strode I don't need to call it by her acting. um I'm going Halloween uh, do I go with the obvious or do I go with the silly one? Go with the silly and then we'll just all say it. We'll, we'll do a funny one. Ones. This one's a funny one. Okay. My silly one is that I would double feature this with SLC Punk and I'd watch SLC Punk first and pretend that this whole movie is Sean tripping on acid. Great. I love it. Great. I love it. And then yeah. the obvious one I assume is disturbing behavior, right? What? Oh, Whoa. that's what I wrote oh, down. Holy shit, that is so weird that you said disturbing behavior because I originally had idle hands and disturbing behavior, and I took disturbing behavior off and put death spot on because I was like, that'd be so much funnier to say. But idle hands was what I thought was the obvious. Oh, see, I wrote down disturbing behavior because it's almost shot in the exact same dark colors, and it's yeah. his best friend is UV yeah. in disturbing behavior. So, yeah. so that was my, my whatever. Um, hey. <laughs> Do you have a better double feature pick for this one? Because I feel like this was not our strongest three picks in the world. Are you kidding? Uh, Death Spot would be awesome. I think Halloween let us would be know, great. I, I know let, I didn't sell it. Don't but listen to Matt. Listeners, let us know your thoughts. Find us on Facebook or on Instagram, HMN Podcast. Let us know what you would be double featuring this movie with. And uh, you know what? If you love the show, why don't you show it off in a t-shirt? Go to hmnpodcast.com, buy some merch from us. Uh, And finally, we talked about it about 14 times in this episode. We do have a Patreon. Shocker, I know. Go to patreon.com backslash hmnpodcast for all types of fun bonus features. It's recommendation time. Scott, you pick this one. How about you let us know something that you've been reading, watching, listening to, whatever that you uh, think people should know about, good or bad. So have you, either of you, watched either of the religious horrors that came out? I think Kyle has seen at least one. I've seen Immaculate. I okay. think I'm going to see First Omen tomorrow. So okay, well then we'll, make we'll that happen. But let, then I actually literally have to go to church at 3 o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon. So if I can't, it depends on what time the matinee is playing. <laughs> that is a weird, weird flex. Um, but also you're not Catholic, so it works out fine. Um, works great. So Immaculate. Let's talk Immaculate. And then two weeks from now, we'll to. talk about First Omen. How's that sound? Um, so Immaculate, I saw... Um, it was like me and three other people. It was great because I don't mm. like going to the movie theater. The The seat was very uncomfortable, but uh, I enjoyed it. I felt like there were a lot of great scenes to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like visually it's fantastic. I, when I found out when, when it, it is kind of explained to the, the viewer what is actually happening and Kyle, let's, go spoiler free um yeah when it is explained what the trope that they went with what mm-hmm. is i was mm-hmm. delighted because it wasn't yeah. what i was expecting um yeah. i was expecting something similar but for them to go that route was pretty cool um yeah i loved the last scene i think that the last scene was so strong that it mm-hmm. kind of puts a pall on the rest of the movie because the rest of the movie mm-hmm. is not as bombastic. It's also like for an 89 minute movie, the pacing is solid, but I feel like yeah. to end that way, I think that they should have kind of ramped up the pace a little bit more. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. or they should have, maybe there's a different cut that would be better. Yeah. But I want to tell you before you, t- well, actually you tell me your thoughts and then I have the craziest fucking anecdote for you guys about yes. Immaculate. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I mean, I don't, I think that it, for me, it gave me a lot of 70s European mm. horror vibes. Uh, I mean, they literally needle drop uh, the Red Queen kills seven times in this movie. No. They, th- that I scene where they're all eating, having a feast, mm-hmm. they that's the only non-original piece of music that is in the movie, as far as I can tell. And it was like, I was sitting there in the theater. I was like, where do I know this? What do I know this from? Like, where? I couldn't figure it out in the theater. Red Queen kills seven times. So that was fun. Like, I was just like, it just solidified for me 
the POV of it, like the approach, the influences, like the things I was getting at, because it also felt very much like a late 70s horror novel. It was like mm-hmm. it, good, good and bad. Like I've read like the pacing of it was like this happens, this happens, this is the unexpected thing, and now we're here. And I was like, awesome! <laughs> I was like, we're almost done here. I looked, you know, I was like, this is amazing. Um, and you're, I, I think you're right about, you are right about, in my opinion, the, that last moment. I mean, Sydney Sweeney, like, really, really gives it. Yeah. But I don't think that, for me, there was a ton of lead up for her and perform, like, to just, like, drop it. Like, that solidified the performance as a great performance for me. Mm-hmm. But like, as far as like just leading and leading and yeah. leading up to that, I like was like, she, she ah. had a death. She didn't do anything for me until then. Yeah. She had a, like a literal, she escaped death at the hands of someone else in the convent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Like 15 minutes before. And she was like, mm-hmm. not freaking out enough. I mean, yeah. and that's, I don't think yeah. that's her fault. I think that there are some no. serious weaknesses in the, in the um, script. Uh, sure. yeah. I think that the concept of the movie is fantastic. I think that it just towed the line of bombacity mm-hmm. without getting to where I wanted it to be to yeah. make the end not feel so jarring. But I mean, maybe that was on purpose. Now, I got to right. tell you guys, Megan went on a vacation. She mm-hmm. went to a resort with her best friend because her best friend won this trip with a plus one for doing so oh, well amazing. at her at work so megan really just had to pay for it was at an all-inclusive resort in jamaica all she had to do was pay for her flight there and back so she gets there and she starts talking up the other people at the resort and who the fuck was there but the director of immaculate's best friend what yeah this woman is like oh yeah he's my best friend were they a biker no but i'll t- Guys, I'll save that for next week. Wherever. I have right, I have it. another story time for next week. Listeners, come back. It is horror centric. It is so fucking silly. But before we say before we sign off for this week and then get to next week's I gotta, shit, I gotta Matt's gotta tell us what he's been <laughs> gorging say, himself I, on. I got a thing. Um, up, Matt. I've actually I've actually not been able to really take in too much media the last week or so. Because I'm like boy. I've been very busy. Yes, it's been a busy time, but I'm going to do the quickest version of this, and I want to talk about it from a specific angle, and Kyle is more than welcome to chime in on this because I know Scott will have no opinion of it, but at the time that we're recording it, uh, WrestleMania 40 had just happened, and yeah. all I How want to say- Jojo Siwa on that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so all I want to say about this is I think- it says a lot that we hear all these things about how terrible Vince McMahon is. He gets removed from the WWE. It is very clear that he has nothing to do with what's happening anymore and that they delivered probably one of the top five best WrestleManias of all time <laughs> without without a person that for years we were told wrestling will ne- wrestle WWE will crumble without a mm-hmm. Vincent McMahon at the helm. So my point being... Fuck toxic people. Fuck pieces of shit. You can make an amazing product. You don't need them. I actually am very excited at a quote that I heard recently where they asked the company uh, that I think it's Endeavor who purchased WWE and they formed their little thing. And they said, Mm -hmm. like, what about these other people? What what if you find out that Triple H knew stuff? What if you find out if like these people in charge knew stuff And their answer was like, We've survived without a person that we were told we would never survive with. Anybody who acts like that, we don't need them here. We can keep making a good product without Love it. it. That right. is how you run a business. Hell yeah. Right. Um, like, that is protect your people, yeah. protect women, all that stuff. It was a great show. Uh, all I'll say is the Sami Zayn Gunther match was was the standout match of the weekend for me, and I'll ask Scott or I'll ask Kyle what his standout match was too. I love that match. Uh, I mean, but I I mean the the Cody versus Reigns championship match just 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 and everything after it, the whole sort of epilogue of it all was was really top notch for me. Um, I I love the weekend. I I I 
echo what you're saying. I think that, you know, they, it's hard. I have a lot of cynicism. So when they tell me that a new era is coming, right, I sort of but like. But it actually felt like it, like correct. genuinely. Like, <laughs> correct. I mean, between, and I think that it's, I, it doesn't only feel like good sort of marketing and PR. It does true. It, 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 feels, it all feels genuine. It feels like they're actually finally able to tell their side of the story and then use that in effect to move forward. You know what I mean? Like actually sort of like they're not being direct, but slyly be like, this is the new era, you know, Triple H using Paul quote, Triple H Levesque, like as opposed to being Vince McMahon, Vince, you know what I mean? Like making this distinction that like, Hey, we, this company is not full of fuckheads. There was one major fuckhead and like we can, we can do this and be the company that everybody wanted us to be and wants us to be so i I feel very excited about what's going forward i'm curious to see what it's going to be like when it's on netflix like the fact that they're like they signed a deal to move basically everything to netflix i'm very i'm like cool but i also feel i feel actually able to be along for the ride do you know what i mean like i actually am yeah that like i don't know if i'm ever going to get back to where i was where i watched like four or five days a week no but like i i actually am like fully watching Coldaholic news breakdowns every morning now just yeah. to be like, oh, I want I, I want to know what storylines are happening and what yeah. pieces are being played so that when it is like a big pay-per-view where I do invite people over and I actually watch them, I'm not... Because that was the only problem with this one. The whole pay-per-view, I'm like, I don't know why these people are fighting, but they're doing a good job fighting. Doing it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like, seems like it's important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was basically it, uh, you know, Final Destination. Will we ever talk about another one? Who knows? Um, will we talk about another Hellraiser in space one day? Again, who knows? Who knows? But stay tuned <laughs> next week. Ninety One Donkey Lane is a magical apartment complex that contains immense power but lacks intelligent inhabitants. What is happening? I'm getting texts. Why are we getting a lot of texts? People found out what we did. Oh, dividing Mike Myers into an infinite amount of tiny Mike Myers. Listen to Ninety One Donkey Lane for free on Spotify or your favorite podcasting app. More at ninety one donkey lane dot com. See you there, you donkeys. It is mind blowing and heartbreaking how many original scripts are written every year but are never made. So we seek out these scripts and bring them to life with full audio production and professional actors. Check us out at Undiscover Scripts, movies made of paper, wherever you get your podcasts. Free. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.